Blue White Illustrated coverage of Penn State on National Signing Day. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. With me to break some news for you is recruiting insider Sean Fitz. No better man to do it than Fitz. We got some good news for Penn State football fans, right? Good news for Penn State football fans. The second signing period uh, has provided very little drama, but it has provided a signing. Chimney Ono is in the books for the Nittany Lions, the final member of the class of 2023 and the final member of a very good offensive line class. He announced at his school today, uh, Dundalk, Maryland, uh, four-star by the consensus, four-star by on three. Um, so there's a lot to like here as Penn State closes out a drama-free second signing day, which is exactly how they want it. It's exactly how they set it up. They sign most of their guys in the December signing window and then focus on one or two guys or, or maybe a couple more, depending on needs, in the uh, in the January window. So, Ono's on board, and Penn State is done. Penn State now has four offensive linemen in a class where they set out to get four or five. So uh, even though it's here at the at the bell, uh, you got to assume that that's a successful class for uh, head for offensive line coach Phil Trotwine. We'll get to that in just a minute, but um, it's not. You mentioned no drama, but it's not without event. Another late surge to get an offensive lineman uh, in the second half of the recruiting window here in the, uh, it's the second year of that with the uh, offensive line coach Phil Troutwine. So talk to us and explain to the fans a little bit about th this recruiting timeline for Ono getting to Penn State. Well, it, it played out a lot like Vega Ione last year. Um, when Vega was committed to, to Washington, Penn State didn't offer him until December. Penn State didn't offer Ono until December 18th. He was previously an Old Dominion commit. A couple schools were coming on strong at the end of his uh, at the end of the first window. Rutgers really wanted him to sign in that first window, and then Penn State was able to beat out Michigan State, Ole Miss down the stretch. In addition to Rutgers, who was still strong in this one until the end, um, it was one of those last minute things. Penn State had an opportunity to. Uh, evaluate some other offensive linemen. They offered a couple in December. Chris Dasson St. John was committed to West Virginia. He just signed with Florida Atlantic today. Um, so you've got uh, – this is the guy that they – but but Ono was the guy that they fixated on. Uh, they went down to see him in December. They liked what they saw on the basketball court. Like I said, they didn't offer until the 18th. So this was a late movement offer, and they were able to, uh, to, to, to work that one out to get that relationship going. He comes from an interesting area that does not produce a ton of Division One prospects. He was a man among boys on his highlight film, um, as you can see. And he's a guy that's going to take a couple of years to develop. We're going to talk about that in a second. But Penn State was able to forge that relationship. I think location was big here. Uh, NIL a factor in this one until the end, of course, as well. Um, but uh, it's one of those guys that Ryan and I talked about as all things equal. He was going to go to Penn State because that that's the one that made the, mess, the most sense. And kids are still making these decisions like that. I mean, it's not all NIL. Don't, don't let NIL jade you too much uh, on the, uh, on, on the system right now, because you still have guys going to schools like Penn state for reasons that other guys before them pick Penn state. So um, they were able to win that out down the stretch. James Franklin went down a couple of weeks ago. Phil Troutwine has been a regular there. And uh, I think the relationships and the, and the location really helped them win out. So you mentioned he's a late riser. And I think that kind of uh, can, segue into what kind of player Penn State is getting because he wasn't just a, a late riser in Penn State offering also in in the recruiting industry he uh, shot up boards recently so what sort of player is Penn State getting and how does that fit into that uh, particular timeline there of being a late bloomer whatever it is on his profile well, if you look at the late riser before we get into the tape, you've got uh, a guy that didn't go to camps, a guy that didn't really do much in the recruiting scene, um, and he was able to go to camp at, at Old Dominion. They offered. He, it wasn't long before he uh, committed there. Really didn't engross himself in the prospect or in the process. And then the second time around, when all these other schools, these bigger schools, wanted to get after him, he really didn't know what to expect. So there was a lot thrown at this kid in, in a in a small window of time. Uh, as a late riser in terms of an offensive lineman, that's exactly what you want to see. 6'5", 270. He's got the reach. He's got a lot of the athletic traits that show up on film that you're looking for. Like I mentioned, he's a project. He's going to take a couple of years to catch up to the speed of the game, to catch up to how big these guys are. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you see some of these clips and he's just, uh, he's mauling guys that uh, are T Frank size <laughs> at times. So um, he's going to, uh, he, he, I think he's, he, he shows enough on tape in terms of athleticism, in terms of, uh, of Twitch and balance and those little things that you look at that you feel like he can turn into a really high ceiling player. And if you look at the rankings, 
Um, he's really shot up in the last couple of weeks just because of what we think he can be. I, I mean, those rankings are not what he is now. So I'll be interested to see him develop, be interested to get him into a weight program, a nutrition program where he's got a little bit more consistency. And if he is able to take on that, if he is able to, uh, to put in the work necessary, this is a guy that can be right up there with some of those other offensive linemen that Penn state signed in this class. All, all I heard was that you said that the players he's playing against have a lot of heart. That's what I heard. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we we talked about this just a second ago, but I want to underscore this talking about Chimney Ono and talking about this uh, this offensive line class as a whole. Phil Troutwine gets another commitment in one of these compressed cycles. So what is it about Phil Troutwine or just the fit with the guys they've targeted in the second half of the of the commitment window cycle that he's been so successful getting another guy like Chimney Ono across the line when it's a narrow pool and a lot of guys uh, are getting that intense focus from several schools. That's a great question. I, I I don't have an answer for that because the two situations are polar opposites. You had Vega from the West coast that came in, you know, this is, it just took one visit for both of these guys, but it's a very different visit when you're coming from Washington versus coming from uh, the Baltimore area. I mean, you, you, you chimney has had Penn state like at least somewhere in his region, you know, for, for the time that he's been watching football, where it's not true with, with, uh, with Vega. So I don't know that there is one thing, but Penn state put all of their energy into this guy. They put all their energy, you know, aside from the transfer portal and things like that, they put all their energy into Eoni last year and, you know, bring him into campus, uh, show them something different and, and make it work. I will say Vega, they got the last shot with Vega last year. They got the first shot in January with, with chimney this year. So like I said, polar opposites. I don't think there's a, there's a simple formula other than he got it done. And that's uh that's pretty impressive. The run that he's been on with offensive linemen, which is already extended into 24 with Cooper cousins and 25 with Jalen Matthews. There's something going there. Penn state's doing a really good job with that uh, in terms of recruiting uh, what they're looking for in the offensive linemen. They're getting bigger. They're getting more athletic up front. Um, Chimney again is, is, a, is a project, but at the same time, I mean, this is a guy you take a chance on every day, you know, every, every cycle, if a guy comes along like this and he's, he's different than Birch Meyer, he's different than Javen Williams. So he's, you know, he's a little bit in the same camp as Anthony Donka, but you, you always take a chance on that guy. So it'll be interesting to see his development in the next couple of years under trout wine and under, uh, the, the offensive staff that they've been able to, to put together. Yeah. And you, you put a, you know, you expressed it perfectly as far as you know, project and taking a couple of years to develop him and, and the tools he's working with as well. So I just want to put a, a little bit of a finer point on some of those things uh, that, that you notice on film from Ono and some of the areas that I think he's going to have to um, work on outside of the obvious things of getting bigger and stronger. Um, these are the things, again, high school offensive lineman, I think you set it up well again of where he's from and maybe some of the things that he's working with. The main thing for me is pad level. Uh, that uh, he there's a lot of disguising how athletic he is because some of his techniques are so raw. And when you're standing up at the line of scrimmage and, and you're not getting that level of, you know, that level of, of power, especially in his kick slide as well, which, you know, we're going to we have a T Frank's film room at blue white illustrated dot com. I go into a little bit more detail talking about his kick slide and some of the things I noticed there, but all of it footwork pad level. Uh, his kick slide, it's all kind of tied together in terms of those are the things he's going to be needing to work on. The finer points of coming off the line of scrimmage, he doesn't always have both, at least one foot in the ground. You know, that power position that offensive uh, line coaches will will teach him about of you never want to have both feet off the ground. You don't ever want to be loping or running. And there's a lot of times you see him coming off the line of scrimmage where uh, his feet aren't great, but what you like is even then he is so athletic that you barely notice. It's hard to notice unless you're looking at some of these things because he's able to run up on guys. He's able to latch onto them. Those long arms you talked about uh, and, and the, you know, some early signs of good techniques and understanding and putting the effort in. I think his body type and his body shape tell me that he takes it seriously. The weight room, the off the field stuff, uh, the things he can control outside of the technique and, and stuff he'll learn from coaching at the next level. I really like everything I see from him. And then, as you mentioned, we'll just put it a, again, put a finer point on here. His down blocking to me, that's one thing I wanted to highlight. His ability to explode off the line of scrimmage. Ryan was talking about some of his track numbers in shot put and in, in discus. You see that when he explodes off the line. That's why this is the first uh, clip on his highlight reels because he gets 
it's good pad level. He gets a run at it. Um, I, it. Again, his footwork can be good in these, better in these situations, but it is really impressive to see him work off the line of scrimmage and explode out and use that power. Uh, so that's it for me. Again, Ryan is uh, down there in Maryland. He is uh, gave you gave you the live stream of Chimdi's commitment. He'll also have an interview. We're hoping uh, with Chimdi here to go up on our YouTube channel. So check all of that stuff out here on Penn State's National Signing Day. Ryan, anything uh, fits, anything else uh, for uh, Chimdi Ono that you want to go over? One last point to your point. I think a lot of his issues that show up on tape are fixable with technique, with, uh, like I said, nutrition, strength, things like that. Um, gets a little bit wide sometimes, and that's fine. You know, that's something that he'll clean up with. I mean, just the simple things. I mean, the stances and things like that. You don't think about that stuff, especially when you're covering high-level offensive line or high-level college football. But a lot of that stuff he's going to have to learn because, you know, he's he's raw in every sense here. So um, big raw prospect. Um, you know, a lot of the same things we've said about Javen Williams, we're, we're kind of saying about Jimmy. So that's good. Um, you know, it, it, I don't think they're on the same level in terms of being a prospect, but Chimney can be really, really good. If he, if, if the things break the right way, he can be a really good prospect. Six, five, two seventy, like it length, like it, like a lot of those things that he brings to the table, checks a lot of boxes. He's just going to have to get, uh, get caught up with everybody else around him and coming from his background, coming from the, the league that he plays in. I think it might take a little bit more time than some others. It'll be fun to watch that process, and you can do that bluewhiteillustrated.com with us. If you sign up now, $29.99 to get access to the insider information until the start of football season. Uh, it's a great deal. Of course, like this video, share, and subscribe wherever uh, you're watching here on YouTube. Fitz, thanks so much. I think this is the last one. We can't do another one for 2023, right? <laughs> I, I checked in last night and someone said if it is not the last one, they were going to have some problems. And that was on the Penn State side of things. So, uh, no, they, they're done for 2023 unless, I mean, something pops up like a like a Gary Wooten or something like that down the line. That's even before your time. So uh, the, unless something down the road pops up, yeah, they're they're done for 2023. But that doesn't mean that they can't start in 2024. There was a new a new pick in uh, this morning on Wednesday at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Another reason to sign up and get that inside information. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. That's Sean Fitz. We will be back with the next breaking news, the next commitment, the next thing that happens. We'll be covering here on Blue White Illustrated. So make sure you hit notifications. You never miss breaking news.